Welcome to Star Connects. Today we are in Northern England in the city of Hull. Known for its quirky museums, its literature, its amazing galleries. And if you are a fiction person for Robinson Crusoe, who set sail to conquer the world right from here. But today, we are here to look for the man we like to call the King of the North. It's Benjamin Tete, Hall City and Black Stars player. He'll be telling us about his career, how he got to the UK, his humble origins. It's all here on Star Connect. Stay with us as we meet him shortly. Star Connect is powered by Positive Communications, Platinum Live, Nike Media Hub. Media partners are Joy Prime, Joy News and Joy FM. Welcome back to Star Connect, the show that promises to connect you with African football stars. Like I said, we are in Hull City in the north of England. Benjamin Tete, King of the North. Looks it. Look, I see if he's in the Royal Banner of Hull, isn't it? Orange and some black and orange and black shoes to match. Ben, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you very much, Gary. How are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, for a guy of your height and build, you speak very softly. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how I speak, I don't know. <laughs> you are not like that on the pitch though, very really? vocal, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm very calm, like. On the pitch? I don't know, maybe, you know, sometimes when you're on the pitch, you're just like, you know, in another zone or whatsoever, you know, so, yeah, maybe. How's England treating you? Is it your first time playing in England, yes? Yeah, professionally, yeah, yeah it's my first time, yeah, yeah. How's, how's England it's treating good. you? Good, um, I mean, obviously, most of, um, Every young guy dreams of playing in England, so yeah, I mean, it's good here, I love it here, um, people are nice, everyone is nice and the game is good, um, helps you, you know, like, get like the best out of your, yourself, so yeah, I love it here. What was the journey like though, I mean, Benjamin Tete came to national consciousness, for those who really follow football in the youth teams, but for those who don't, black stars, you know, so let's, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, where are you from? Tema. Yeah, TM boy. TM. Full TM boy. Community? No, Newtown. Community? Oh, Newtown. Newtown. Yeah, Tema Newtown. Tema Newtown boy, yeah. Full TM boy. So you played which teams? Colts? Any Colts? Or any? Um, yeah, so I, I was registered as a goalkeeper for Royal Underlates in Newtown. Nobody's surprised. No, but I, when, I was, when I was young, I wasn't that big. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was young, I wasn't that big. I think I started getting big around 14, 15, yeah. I was always like the skinny lad among here, so yeah. So yeah, basically I played, I was a goalkeeper for Royal Underlights. You, you actually kept the goal? Yeah, I was, I was very good at penalties. <laughs> yeah, and then, I mean, stop, I didn't stop playing for a while, but I was not really like going like, you know, to play and stuff, just like playing on the street and stuff. So I met Abu, uh, Abu Sundongo, came for me and then I went to, my teachers, but I started from Kindoko, the coach, where Coach Opele met me and then introduced me to the under 17. Yeah, so most people don't know this, but it's actually um, Coach Opele that gave me the first shot. I see. Yeah. Into from then, um, from Raya and Aleti went to Kindoko. Yeah, Kindoko. For the coach. The co yeah, yes. yeah, coach. And so, yeah, basically we played some games and then Abu told me they are like, um, um, I think he told me there is um, 
a coach coming from the national team to scout, not just me, but like the team. So everybody, to see what basically, you get. yeah. So everybody have to put on their best. So, and I consider myself lucky that day. So yeah. So I was scouted by Coach Opele, and I joined the guys in Pram Pram. Great. And then from the national team. Um. <clears throat> so after the under seventeen, um, I went to Right to Dream. I joined them, and then we came to England. Yeah, to Manchester City for training camp and then tour some games and stuff. So then I went back and then... How, how long were you, were you at Right to Dream? Right to Dream? Um, I think I, I think about three months or two okay. months. Yeah. Okay. Not too yeah. long. Not so, I don't remember. It's, it's been a while. No, but it's not... You yeah. didn't, yeah. You didn't not, keep no, too no, long. No, no, no. Yeah. I was not there for a long time. Yeah. So, Mighty Jess before Right to Dream? Yeah. Right to Dream was just like, like you know, I just passed through, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So, then... Um, after Right to Dream, you came back to Mighty Jets? Yeah, after Right to Dream, I went back to Mighty Jets and then, yeah, I was with Mighty Jets, then I went to Dreams, passed there also, then, yeah, I just, just that, that's the journey. From there, then, that's where you came to Europe? Yeah, from, from, so from Dreams, then I came to Europe, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, how was the scouting process like? Were you scouted at Right to Dream and then you um, came to Europe? Oh, no. So... Right to dream. I think they saw me when I was with the under seventeen because they they have a um, few guys also over there. So yeah, I was with um, Yao Yubua, Thomas Japan, That's Kingsley cool. Phobie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so we came to the UK for games and stuff, and then we went back. Then I went back to Mighty Jets, and then I played a little bit in the Division One. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. So. Yeah, so after after Mighty J, then I went to Dreams. So Dreams also I was at, at the under 20, and then I used to come and go Any, anytime we are like on break or something. Yeah, so yeah, you come to Europe. Yeah, you've yeah. been coming to Europe a long time. Yeah, I started traveling at 16. Yeah, I remember I went to so first I went to Red Bull Salzburg. Okay. Yeah, I went to Red Bull Salzburg and then I came back. And then, that's for trials. Yeah, for trials. So I came back. I don't know what happened, but management issues, so yeah. So when I was there, I was there with um, David Atanga and then Raphael. Yeah, Dramina. Yeah, Dramina, yeah, so... I came and then back. Majid came later. Yeah, Majid and Cody went later. Yeah. So after Red Bull, where did I go? So after Red Bull, I went to Basel <laughs> in Switzerland. Yeah. Man, you've traveled. Yeah, after Red Bull, I went to Basel also for trials, and then from Basel, I went to Gladbach, Monchi Gladbach. Yeah, so after Monchi Gladbach, then I went to Atletico Madrid. Bro! <laughs> yeah, yeah, so after Atletico Madrid, um, so yeah, after the Atletico Madrid, we went to the under 20 um, African Cup in Senegal. Yes. Then after That's Senegal. In Boy and all those yeah, places. Yeah. So, after then the World Cup under 20, and then I signed for Standard Liège in Belgium. In Belgium. Yeah. We are in Hall, which is a port city historically. I mean, it's had many, you know, it was one of the cities that was affected by the World War and so had to be rebuilt in a while. But also, it's known as the place where, if you like your historical fiction, like I said in my introduction, Robinson Crusoe is associated with here. He set sail from here into the world. This man, he's been all over the world. So. It's apt that we are in the in the port city of Hall as well. I mean, you're well, very well traveled, and hanging around with you just for this past few hours, I can tell like you're quite exposed. Um, yeah, I mean, I started traveling early, so I have to You've learn. Seen a lot. Like, yeah, not seen a lot. I have to learn a lot. Yeah, I have to learn a lot. Like so, yeah, it's something like that. Great. So Benjamin, one of your obviously the most house standing things about you when you are seen is your, your height. Oh, yeah. Has this played in every trial you've gone? Have they wanted to plug into your height because they think you can? How has that affected your career positively, obviously? So basically, when, um, when people see me, the first thing they notice is about my height. And then, you know, obviously players that are tall, most people think they cannot play. They are just like, you know, playing with the head. But funny enough, I'm the worst with my head. Your ball control is your thing. I love play. I love to play football. So yeah, that's so it always comes like a surprise to anyone that like sees me play. They'll be like, oh, you know, and I'll just, you know, I'm just chill always, like just calm. So yeah. When I was checking up on you, I, I also realized that 
quite a fair number of teams had decided or thought about making you a defender Me. at a point. Yes, maybe they think that because of your height and build, they want you to be a defender or... Really? Yeah. I, mean, I think it's the first time I'm actually hearing this. Really? I've never, no coach has actually. So basically, what most coaches actually tell me is like they would love to exploit me up front, rather. But As a centre forward? Yeah, like either centre forward or left wing or yeah. um, right wing or even mostly number 10. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, but never heard it like someone wants to. Yeah, do like that a defender. No, great, great, no. great. So, so we've got that part of your beginnings ready, and 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 straight, education-wise. Yeah. In in Ghana, with all this travel, you probably didn't have a lot of time to no. do no. a lot of. I actually just um, finished JHS. Yes. Never went to secondary school. Because you went into playing football. Yeah. And yeah. I choose. I chose football, so I never um, had a chance to, you know, like enjoy like SHS life and all those kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just, Never. Wow. Is yeah. it is this something you regret? No. I mean, I think the, the, the things that I need to, to know about my career is to be able to speak English yeah. and read and then write. Yeah. And I think I, I'm able to do those things. So, And I mean, education-wise, also, it's not just like about the things that you learn in school. Basically, like daily life can teach you so much that you don't actually learn in school. So, yeah, I think I learn everything through daily life. Street sense. You have to be street smart. <laughs> the school of hard knocks, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, so with, with all this, what are some of the most memorable experiences you've had on the road? I'm asking because for a lot of people and young players who are watching these interviews yeah. that we do of you guys, they look up to you for some of these stories and tips. And you in particular, more than yeah. most footballers that I have spoken to on this series, yeah. have been literally all over the place. What do you have to tell the young footballer who is watching? Um, it's hard, you know. It's hard. Um, some, some get it easy. Some get it hard. But I believe in everything. You just always have to trust your guts. Yeah, you just have to trust your guts. And you don't have to look at what, like, someone else is doing you know everybody's got like different destiny everybody's got like whatever god have like planned for the person so you always just have to trust your guys and then believe in yourself so with with, with that out of the way uh, this is star connect by the way this is the show that promises to connect you with african football stars this man um was that close to being part of the ghana squad for the world cup I'm saying was that close because he, well, I'm going to ask him yeah, yeah. Uh, himself. He was part of the AFCON team. He went to the AFCON. He was definitely in the recon, reckoning for the qualifiers. He went to the Kirin Cup, which was just a couple of months ago, with uh, the team, you know, where they were invited. And most people felt that that team that went was largely going to be the source from which the World Cup team was taken. Unfortunately, unfortunately, as fate would have it, something will happen to this man and so when we come back from this commercial break benjamin tete is going to tell us the story himself um star connect of course is powered by positive communications also nike media hub um nlc ghana and also um i am kitted and clothed by abrantia the gentleman you can find him at achimota looking good i'm tight yeah so We'll be back after this commercial break. When we come back, more from Benjamin Tete. Star Connect is powered by Positive Communications, Platinum Live, Nike Media Hub. Media partners are Joy Prime, Joy News, and Joy FM. Star Connect Trivia When a team wins the World Cup, they get 45 medals to share among players and staff. Welcome back to Star Connect 
show that promises to connect you with your favorite African football stars. Today we are in the north of England. We are in Hull and Benjamin Tete is with us. He moved to Hull not long ago. Unfortunately, he's been bitten by the bug that's called injury. We'll come to that pretty shortly. But we were talking about his beginnings all the way to when he came to Europe and how that came about. Then we landed in the junior national teams. How do you reckon that being in the junior national teams contributed to you becoming the player you are today? Oh, I think it helps like everyone, it, like kind of gives you like, um, like a boost of confidence, you know, you know you, you've been able to be part of like, let's say it's 23, yeah. the best 23 in the country and then you represent the country and everything. So it gives you, um, um, first, I think first, most importantly, it gives you confidence that you are able to, to, to do whatever like you want on the pitch. Yeah. You played for U20. Yeah. You didn't go to U17. Yes, U I played U17. U17 yeah, yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Opele saw you for U17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. did U17 go for any international tournament yeah, with you? We played in um, Morocco. And uh, um, so, <laughs> so we played in Morocco and then Nigeria beat us, I think, 5-1 or something, yeah. Was that was that tournament, yeah. But I didn't play, yeah. You didn't play? Nah, I didn't play. I didn't play in that game particularly. That game, yeah, yeah but yeah. you were in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. I played in some. So from there, you had, um, graduated to the U20? U20, yeah. Yeah, and that was under Selas. Selas, yeah. Selas Tete. Anytime we mention Selas, you have a smile on your face. Why is that? Because if you know Selas, he's like, he's a funny one, you yeah, know. He'll yeah. make you laugh, you know. Yeah, so. The Bobovich. Like, Bobovich. So anytime you hear his name, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, the fun stuff, you know. What yeah. were some of the memories? Bobovich. Um, so, so if, like, there is, like, let's say a counter-attack, he would just, like, come up and start shouting, Oh, double. Oh, double, you know. And, <laughs> you know, you, you cannot forget this stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> Hold that ball. Hold that ball. Yeah. Like, I don't know what he's saying, but like, hold that ball. Like, his own language, <laughs> I don't know. And then he'll be gesticulating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he was a very knowledgeable. He is, sorry, a very no. knowledgeable man. Yeah. Salas is, I think, he's one of the smart coaches I've, I've met, like, in Ghana. And even, yeah, he's smart, like, book wise, like, the game and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was asking you how, you know, the youth teams contribute. So, if you see some of these players obviously very good players 19 20 21 brought straight to the black stars as a player who went through the mail what's the difference what difference can it make mm -hmm. going straight into the senior national team and then going through there does it is it different is it a different feel does it do something different to you the um psyche? no i don't think so i think um once the coach is able to select you then probably the coach have seen something in you that thinks that you can bring into the first team yeah. so i think like the coaches are they know what they are doing best than i do yeah. so yeah i think once the coach selects you then he thinks you can bring or add something up to 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 the senior side i think you're good to go once you play it in your club and then you you do whatever you do there and then show that you are capable. Was there always the fear among the teams you played in the 17-20 that hey Charlie we have to do well or else? Um yeah, I mean they you always because most most of the time you always remember they, they are you they are they are their squad that they want. So they the target is always like you always have to hit that target. So yeah, there is always a fear. You are playing for the national team this you always have like um like something like, you know, knowing that you have to deliver. You cannot afford to fail. But, I mean, once again, we are all human, so. How, how quickly did you get used to the pressure of the national team? And, you know, you not winning a game and then you listening to the radio and then them saying, we more more yeah, and, um, you know. Funny enough, I, I don't listen to radio. And when you are young, I think most of the time what you do, I mean, for me, what I did personally is like, I know, like, from where I come from, yeah. if you know Tama New Town, you know it's, um, it's a rough place. So certain things you have to just, like, you have to know how to deal with certain things. If you know you can take the pressure or what someone says to you, yeah. then you can listen to what the person is saying. But if you can't, then don't listen to it. So what you don't know doesn't kill. <laughs> so you that, didn't yeah. listen? No, I don't. I, I mean, I just... Even now? No, no, I don't. I don't listen to what anybody says. Like... I'm just like doing my own thing all the time. Yeah. I love to chill, like just calm on my own. So 
yeah, I'm just like always calm. I can tell. I mean, you, <laughs> like, like Benjamin is. I mean, he, I've hung around a lot of footballers. Benjamin is super chill. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's. I think it's a. How uh, how has that? Do you think helped you in your career being like oh, that? I mean, when I I I like I think it helped me like get out of like a lot of troubles. You know, like going out and doing certain stuff or you know i would just like just relax at home and then i would just be doing my own thing yeah. Yeah. is your tete i can no it's gone yeah it's gone right tete. so yeah. it's a new town yeah, it's a new okay, town okay, okay. so yeah. your family house is in Tema. yeah it's in Tema. yeah yeah, yeah. Go closer, oh right right yeah, so yeah. he's from the Tema new town yeah. inside so the chief that actually died yeah. We're actually from the same house. So. Ah, the funeral was uh, yeah. the, was big. So you never know. I might be a chief one day. Ni Tete. What's your middle name? Um, Osa. Ni Osa Tete. Osa Mensa Tete. Ni Osa Mensa Tete, the first. Tema New Town Manche. One. Okay. All right. Uh, this is Star Connect. We are hanging out with uh, the chill man, Benjamin Tete. Outside. Hall. No, not outside. Yeah, we're outside. We're yeah, outside. outside. We're outside. Yeah, you're one thing. Yeah, you're one thing. <laughs> you notice if you've been watching this series that all the footballers, when we say that, they understand exactly what I'm saying. We're outside. Yeah, you're one yeah. thing. So we're all one thing. Hall. What do you say? Yeah. Um, pretty cool place in the north of England. I chill for an Accra boy like me, Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> who's not lived abroad a lot. I mean, despite all the travel. And uh, let, let's let's start from there. I mean, again. You've established how much you've traveled and everything. From U20 to you to the national team. Yeah. What was the jump for the senior national team? What was the jump like for you from U20 to the senior national team? Um, so I think it was it was it was good. It was good. Took a while but it, it was took a while. Yeah. But it was worth the wait because obviously the coaches that were there always like know like the kind of players that they want in their team and stuff so when i got the chance i i think the coach knew what he wanted in me that's why he invited me so yeah it took a while but it was it was worth it was worth the way and the wait and in that yeah. time you were still <coughs> you were still globe trotting around yeah, yeah, yeah you went to um Slova, uh, where's sparta it called? Prague sparta Prague in, Prague 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 in yeah. Czech uh huh and then i went to Turkey Yeni yeah. Matalias Yeni Malatia sport. Malatia sport. Yeah, it's Malatia. always like, yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. Malatia. Malatia sport, not Natalia sport. Yeah. Right. Um, what was Turkey like? Turkey, I mean, um, Turkey is one of the best countries you can live in. Yeah, but I felt like personally for me, football wise, I could have done much more better if yeah. I had, you know, like done certain things better. But um, yeah, it's still like a learning curve. I'm still young. I still have like a lot of time. So. Yeah, it's it's take but Turkey is really good. I love Turkey. It's 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 really good. Yeah. Weather. Yeah, the weather was the weather so where I was playing yeah. during summer it's hot, like really like proper. And when it's cold also it's proper cold. cold. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's it's a good place. Turkey is a good place. I like. I am journalistically obliged to ask you, what could you have done better? <laughs> hard work. If I'd work hard, um could have done. Yeah. yeah. If I had, yeah, I could have done like. You, took, you think way. you took it a bit too easy? I didn't. I don't think I took it a bit too easy, but I was just, I just didn't do enough for myself. Yeah. Very honest, like, yeah. I didn't do enough for myself. So yeah, and that was like the inspiration of coming to England. That because was, because yeah. England, I mean. You yeah, you you don't have a choice. You, no, you, you don't have a choice. Go hard or go. Go home. Yeah. yeah. So that was the inspiration coming here because. After I terminated my contract with uh, Malatia, I could have gone to Arabia, I could have gone to anywhere I wanted, but when the offer came from England, I was like, okay. Were you as surprised as we were that no. Hull City came for? Like, when, when, I, when I saw her, I'm like, what? No, I wasn't, because when I was in Sparta, I had like quite like um, Premier, Premier League clubs that wanted me, but management issues or yeah, sure, i don't sure. know whatsoever couldn't happen so i wasn't sh i wasn't surprised but i mean it is what it is Bec i ask whether you were surprised because i mean you know some of us who were 
had our ears to the ground yeah. knew that you were not having such a great time at yeah, yeah, yeah. in Turkey. Oh, in Turkey it was good, but what happened? Like, if you actually follow like the first season of last last season, it was really good until everything turned around. The management, like the, the club, the management. So every player left. Yeah. Every player left. So I was the only guy and another Egyptian that was there. And then we, so we were playing with young kids like under 17 18 so it was it was like a mess yeah like it was crazy so that was like what went wrong in turkey but during the beginning of the season i was enjoying like yeah. really yeah i was proper enjoying but afterwards everything went like sideways so the project at hall was explained to you yeah about why they wanted you um so basically i met the the owner of the club yeah, he invited me to his house in Istanbul. Oh. So I went there. I was on holiday at then, so I went to Istanbul and then the the he basically told me what he, he wanted. Uh what he wanted and then what like their project is and how they've seen me play in Turkey and then they, they think they can they know that they can um develop me well and blah blah. So yeah, it was so after I had a meeting with him it was was really good. It's really good. So even before then, when I was on when I was on board going there, so I had a call also from Serbia, from Red Star in Belgrade. So it was like, you know, but after I had the conversation with him, I was like, nah, this is it. England it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the England factor sway you as well? The fact that it I think England. so, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because I know that um if I come here you have no choice, you have to work hard and then and I feel like that's the one of the fundamentals that's missing in me or something. Yeah. So if you know, the championship is actually one of the toughest leagues in the world. Yes. It's yes. like really tough. Like yeah. I've traveled, I've been to places, I've seen other games and stuff. But the championship... This could easily be the Premier League of many yeah, other it's, countries. It's crazy, like really. So even before I was coming here, so I spoke with Dede Capito. Yeah. And then he told me, if you are ready to work hard, then go there. But if you are not then don't. That's what he told me. Yeah. And you said, okay, I'll take the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. you are. Yeah. So yeah. at what point did coming to Hall City give you a sense that it can give you more time or an increased role with the Black Stars? Um, at what point? Yes. Because, I mean, if you play in England, sometimes that's why I think maybe the kind of leagues that we play also affect. have like yeah. affecting the national team so i think i know that or i think if i played england and then i'm doing well obviously i'll be like you know part of the squad or the, most of the time if i'm doing well yeah so when when the england call came i was like yeah why not that's that's yeah. great that's great that's great so fast forward you play ghana plays in the qualifiers get into the world cup um but before then obviously there was the africa cup of nations yeah in cameroon yeah how would you describe the tournament i mean we all know it it's it wasn't our tournament it's everything went sideways well none of us like you know like actually thought will happen you know and i try as much as possible to forget about that tournament mm -hmm. yeah I try as much as uh, I can. But Ghanaians have not forgotten. I know. Do you think they are justified in being angry with you guys? I mean, they have all the right to be angry on us. I mean, we are human also, and humans are, are born to fail. So if we fail, we 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 get back up and then try to, you know, go up again. So yeah. Your personal involvements. What happened? Um, uh, in one of the games getting to the end there was a match scramble yeah. you know and then you had a red card in your own words how did it happen like you know my family actually asked me what i told them the same like i don't know everything happened like like this i don't know what happened so now if you ask me like what happened i still don't know you know <laughs> because i know like if you know me or any other person that knows me will tell you Ben will never, you know, like if they told the person, and the person didn't yeah, watch, like if like, the person didn't watch what happened, they will, they will be like Ben, like no, you know. So I don't know, but I didn't even go there also with the intention of if I don't know, but 
from my view, I was just like pushing. We all push each other all the time. Sure, sure, sure. But maybe because of my height and then the guy is small. Yeah. That's why my hand went to his face. But I, I'll never go in like. <laughs> this is Star Connect. We'll be right back with Benjamin after this commercial break. Stay with us. Star Connect is powered by Positive Communications, Platinum Live, Nike Media Hub. Media partners are Joy Prime, Joy News, and Joy FM. Star Connect Trivia When a team wins the World Cup, they get 45 medals to share among players and staff. Welcome back to Star Connect. We are with Benjamin Tete. Yeah, the stadium, we are now at his home. And Benjamin, Darren. thank you for having us again. Thank you. Welcome to my home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that's my corner, right? That's your corner? Yeah. Everybody has a corner in their home. That's his corner. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So, before we came home at the stadium, we yeah. finished just when we got to the AFCON and um, you having a difficult time in that second game. So in your own words, what happened against Gabon? Um, <clears throat> to be very honest, it's like I told you in the beginning, you know, till now, if you ask me, I don't know. I really don't know what happened. Like everything has happened like so fast that like, I didn't even realize it until like, I was in the changing room and then we was like in the bus going home and then like the guys started talking about it and everything but I mean anyone that knows like everyone around me was like what happened like like just yeah like because I'm I'm not like um that type of person you know like someone who's going like you know like fighting or so yeah the first person that actually called me was a free because I was playing with him in Malachi anytime like there is like you know like misunderstanding i'm the one who always goes and then pull him over you because if he is has you know is, and is, then he's hot yeah and he <laughs> knows that i'm like that chill like always trying to separate him from fire or whatsoever so he was the first person this that, is like, a free aqua yeah free aqua yeah he was the first person that called me and was like benji like what happened like what happened you know like you are the one who separates people from fights you know so what actually happened? I, I told him the same. I don't know. Everything happened just like this. So, but it's a great lesson for me, you know. You as as human, like even like in the real life, you know, not just on the pitch. I've learned like so, like I've learned so much. I'm already a chill person, so now you can imagine like now you, I'm two you'll be times, chiller. you know. Yeah, now I'm two times <laughs> chill. Yeah, so you know at the time. A lot of people were rooting for you. Oh yeah, because then yeah. your stock was. Uh, people were like Charlie yeah, Benjamin. Yeah, he did, yeah, did. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah but I, mean, uh, I apologize to the people that I let down. Um, it's a mistake. I'm human, as like everyone, you know. Um, I made a big mistake, and I've, I've um, accepted the responsibility that I came with. So yeah, it's made me learn a lot and be more calm. So. Yeah, I mean, sorry to, to the people. A few of your youth coaches who have watched the video have said that that incident is not the Benjamin they know. Yeah. Anybody like... You know, maybe is, maybe because of... No, no. Your height and... Don't let my height deceive you. I'm, I don't fight. Me... <laughs> don't let the height deceive you. I mean, God just some way blessed me with this height, you know. But... I never use my height like to intimidate people or nah, nah, never done that. So like anybody that you ask, like 
if you show like they don't know they've not seen the video and then you tell them they will be like nah have you watched that video again video um so what happened was because i i know that i didn't punch the guy yeah but everybody said i punched him but i knew that i was pushing so you didn't him punch him no i was pushing him away yeah like you know like just pushing everyone was just pushing you know but i don't know like i told you because maybe i'm tall and he was smaller so my hand went straight to his face or i don't know so and then he fell yeah. yeah and so i watched the video everything in the video shows that i punched him yeah what can i do benjamin your very short black stars career has been blighted by that incident you know and people will not see that you've had such a sterling time but getting into the team itself in your short time what have been the the highs of being part of the black stars so far oh i mean since your first call yeah, i mean you get the chance to play with one of the best players you know you learn a lot from them you get the chance it, it gives you like self-confidence also as i said um any club like any new club you go or even your old club playing for the national team you earn like um same respect you know so yeah it's if you play for the national team there is like a lot of like plus in it you know yeah what was it like getting a call up and of course your initiation as well what was it like do you remember the circumstances under oh, which yeah, you got a call I up i remember <laughs> i remember very well so i was um i was at home with my daughter and my wife turkey yeah, Ghana, in, turkey, in turkey and my wife and my mom and my brother so it was basically all the family was there and then i got a call from alex from Asante. Alex, yeah and then he was asking me about my flight details and blah 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 you know so i was in the room at then so i came out and then i told my mom and my wife and then my brother and everybody was just like you know yeah. they were happy i was i was happy as well you know yeah it was it was it was a really nice feeling yeah it's like for the black stars everybody's waiting for alex asante's call yeah alex alex is like a god <laughs> <laughs> Especially for the new players yeah. coming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it because was. if he calls you, then you know that. Yeah. It's said to be that. Yeah, yeah. And what was your initiation into the Black Stars like? It was lovely. It was lovely. I mean, you see, you see all the big guys, and you know, you already know them and stuff, you know. But then when you meet them, like how they welcome you, some of them know you already, you know. You see your your friends and. Like it's it's just fun, you know. It's fun to be there. And you chose the number three jersey. Um. So basically, what happened? I didn't actually choose the number three jersey. Oh. Yeah. So, um, I was supposed to play with the twenty-five, but during the the qualifications, you, the number is only up to twenty-one. I yep, think. Yep. Yep. And the three was there, so I was just like, yeah, I'll just take it. You didn't feel any any because. I you mean, were, the you, three you, were, you were inheriting a legendary number. Yeah, that's baby, you know. So, be, what happened was like after the game, yeah. I got on phone with him, you know. You did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got on phone with him, and then we we chat for a while. Yeah. Oh, what do you say? I mean, that's between me and baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's 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 great. That's great. But Benjamin, you've played in the Black Stars. You've got a good reputation for yourself, you know. There's the opportunity because Ghana has lacked goal scorers. And in Turkey, things were okay. You moved to Hull, your reputation went up. You were called for the Japan game, the Chile game. Yeah. And then your season started and you got injured after about 10 games or so. Yeah. What happened to your World Cup dream in your own words? I mean, um, you know, injuries, they are, they are part of the game, you know. It's, it's unfortunate though, but life goes on, you know. It's sad, I actually don't like to think about it or talk about it, Understood. but certain things you cannot avoid them, you know. It will come your way either way. and. I just have to deal with it, like, you know, psychologically and then see the positive side of it. Um, so I always try to, um, in like every situation that's like negative, you know, that you don't see light, you know, I always try to pick one positive side in it and then just like keep it to myself. So I saw with the positive side, like, okay, now I'm injured. It's the first time I'm 
like really injured for like a long time so yeah i'll just like get the time and the chance to assess myself you know to build myself up in the gym or whatsoever you know and then my my coming back should be better than my previous you know so mm. that's like the positive side i've seen it and then i'm just like holding on to that what happened um so was in the game yeah and then the the defender was passing the ball so if i'm able to intercept the ball we are going on counter attack so i stretch my leg so when i stretch i think my body and then how i stretch my leg was not like in the right place so then i just went down and then um i mean thank god though because most like from everyone they t- they said like when i went down looks like it was my knee oh yeah which so, could have been which could have been like way worse yes. you know so when it when like they came and then assessed me and everything i told them it was my hamstring then they were just like it's not bad as we thought so yeah i mean i just have to deal with it but it happened so yeah how long were you told that the hamstring injury will last for not before the walk up not before the walk up though so yeah so when it happened and you had the scan you knew immediately that so when it happened you know if you know i've had like history with hamstrings so i have a quite knowledge about hamstrings so yeah. i was like oh, okay probably four six weeks i will be like you know i'll be all right but then i had the scan and then they told me i have to see like a specialist then there i started like you know kind of panicking like knowing that oh this is the worst than i thought you know wow. then less than i had have to do surgery well i mean even for me as a you know journalist it's difficult for me to think about you losing a world cup place like that but how are you dealing with it i had the surgery thank god it went well and everything yeah so i'm just um, i just have to deal with it obviously you didn't play in ghana and nigeria part one and two but um what was it like for you during that time because of the red card so obviously i was not there yes but watching the game at home i had a nigerian you were watching team. in ghana no i watched it in turkey so i had a nigerian neighbor it was my teammate also so we watched the game together i was on him i was killing him like <laughs> you know ghana and nigeria is i know man it's just like everything you know so when thomas scored and then we kept going and going and i was like i was after the game i was running in the apartment like all the time and then even when we went to training i was i was on him like i told everyone there like yeah that's the loser you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're buzzing i was buzzing i mean it's 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 joy i think that was one of the first game in the, in the long time that like almost every ghanian was of, was like you know yeah. rooting for ghana and stuff so yeah i was i was i was so happy also great to always meet a footballer who is you know grounded and um just focus on his craft and you know knows what it's about in this world where there are so many distractions so yeah. it's great to talk to you and thank you for welcoming us as well star connect is powered by positive communications platinum live nike media hub media partners are joy prime joy news and joy fm